Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1427. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the start file or the finished file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about the DAX formula, geo mean x function to calculate average compounding rate per period. Now, anytime you are given a number of percentage change or growth rate percentages, in order to calculate the average amount, you cannot use the arithmetic mean. You have to use the geo mean or the geometric mean. Now, I have two videos over here. If you don't know why we have to use geometric mean and why it's so important in finance and other fields, I have this business analytics video and this statistical analysis video from my classes at Highline that explain in great detail how awesome knowing how to use geometric mean is. Now, here are the two formulas. The point in this video is simply to see how to do it in DAX. Now, if we scroll down, we can see we have one, two tables. This table has the year of the actual percentage change, and then the particular investment. So for fund A, we invested in 2004 all the way to the current year 2008. And these are all the percentage changes in the investment. For, let's see, that's fund A. For B, all of these right here. There's the year. There's the percentage change. We also have a second table that lists the name of the investment and the initial investment. Now, I've already started the pivot table and added both of these tables to the data model. So let's go look. Power pivot, data model, F investments. Here are the three columns. And F start investments. If we go over to diagram view, I have this other table here with some calculations. They're hidden for the time being. But at the end of the video, I'll show where you can go look at those if you want. But our particular task is to add a number of measures that will calculate the averaging compound rate, the number of years for each investment, when the investment started, and the current value. Now let's go back over to data view over here to F investments. Now, our first calculation is going to be, and I'm going to start typing. It shoots me up to the formula bar. Average compounding rate in parentheses, geo mean, colon, equal sign. And we'll just use the geo mean. Now, there's a geo mean that if you had a column with the rate of changes plus 1, you could just use that. But we need to iterate over that column and do a calculation. So we're going to use geo mean x. Tab. Geo mean x, we need our table. The name of our table is fi, down arrow to f investments, comma. The expression, well, we need our column, fi, and I need to down arrow to percentage change growth rates. Now, in order to calculate the geo mean, you can't just use the percentage. You have to use plus 1. In essence, that's the original principle plus whatever the rate of change was. And that's our expression. If we close parentheses, this will give us the growth factor. If we hit Enter and go over to our pivot table, Alt-Tab, average compounding rate down here. When we add 1, that's the actual amount that we can multiply by the start amount to give us the ending amount if we raise it to the correct number of periods. Now, in the pivot table report, I actually do not want 1 plus. I want to show the actual average compounding rate. So I'm going to Alt-Tab. Simply click on the cell, and we subtract 1. Later, we'll have to add it back in. But for our report, Alt-Tab, that's what we want to see. Now, we could format that as a percentage if you wanted. Alt-Tab. Click on the cell, and that percentage button, unlike over in Excel, will add percentage format with two decimals. Over in Excel, it has no decimals showing. Alt-Tab, and there are our formatted average compounding rates. Now, at the end, we're going to amend our formulas to get rid of the grand totals. But for right now, we will leave it like that. Now, if we think about how DAX made this calculation right, that bond fund C, well, there's our investment table with our initial investments. That filter right there properly is from the start investment table, drag down to rows. So when in our pivot table, that calculation right there 
sees this criteria bond fund. This table is filtered down to a single row, which then filtered down this table just down to our bond fund C, grabbing only the rates of change for that particular fund. And then the geo mean calculates the correct average compounding rate. Now we're going to need a column for number of years, Alt-Tab. So right below our average compounding rate, we'll type number of years invested colon equal sign. And guess what? All we have to do is use the count rows function. FI, the actual investment. Remember, in the pivot table, when it's on a particular investment, that filter flows across a relationship and filters the F investment table down to just the correct rows, which will give us exactly the number of years. Close parentheses and Enter. Alt-Tab. Now we can drag our DAX formula down to values. Now, notice I completely dragged the wrong formula. But this is a good opportunity to show you. I did a video on this a couple weeks ago. But implicit measures are automatically created when you drag and drop a field down to the values area. And that's not what we want. I'm going to uncheck that. Go back over here. It's not even showing over here. It should be. But if we come over to Advanced and say Show Implicit Measures, if I go over to the F Start Investments, there it is. I'm going to right click Delete. It's going to say, hey, should I delete this from this model? Yes. So mistakes are good if we can learn from them. So implicit measures, if you accidentally drag a field, there will be an extra hidden measure over there. And if you want to get rid of it, you have to show implicit measures and then delete. Here's the correct DAX formula. I drag it down here, and there are the number of years. Alt-Tab, our next calculation is the start year. Start year, colon, equal sign. And guess what? I can look through the year column using the min function, fi. And I want to go down to, luckily they have icons here. That's a measure. This is a column. Investment year tab. Close parentheses and Enter. Alt-Tab. And we can drag our start year over to values. There's the start year. Our last calculation is going to be the current value. Again, this video, these videos up here show you here's the basic formula for calculating future value. We're going to use that formula. Alt-Tab, click down below Start Year, Current Value, colon, equal sign. Now I would like to do FS and then the Start column for investment amount, initial investment. But you cannot put a naked column into a DAX measure. Now remember, that table only has one value for each investment. So I have to use some aggregate function. I'm going to use the sum function. Now when I do FS, I can see that I have the option of columns now, not just a table. It's initial investment, tab, close parentheses. So we're using sum just to get at that column. The filter context obviously will filter down to a single row, and we'll get the investment, the initial investment for each fund. Now we multiply it in parentheses 1 plus the average compounding rate per period. That is a measure, so I type a square bracket. There it is, average compounding rate, geo mean. By the way, these other measures are from the other model that I built in here. So this is the one we want. Save them the fees. These are from the other model, tab. Now, close parentheses, that will not do it, because the whole point of average compounding rate plus 1 is you need to then raise it to the number of periods. Now, I already have that calculation, so I caret raise to square bracket, and it's number of years invested, tab. And that will work. Enter. I could format it. Home, add some sort of currency. Alt-Tab, now we simply drag current value down to the values, expand the columns, and there is the current value for each one of our investments using the correct average compounding rate per period. Now I want to go over and turn off the grand totals. Notice. The logic for us for each measure here will be if this table up here is filtered down to a single item, 
then please run the formula. Otherwise, when it gets down here, for the grand total, the whole table is unfiltered, so they'll have more than one row. Then we'll show nothing. Alt-Tab. I'm going to start with the first one, right before GeoMean. If, and then has one value. FS, I'm going to do investment. Close parentheses. So the logical test is, does it have one value? When it comes out true, comma. Then please run the formula. We leave off the last argument in if over here in DAX if we want the blank function to run and actually display a blank. Now I'm going to use this over and over. So I'm holding Shift, clicking right before the I for if, Control-C. Now I come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. Now I want to do that for each one of these. Right before the C, Control-V. Come to the end, close parentheses. Right before the M, Control-V, close parentheses, and Enter. Right before the S, Control-V, close parentheses, and Enter. Now we go back over, and there is our report using DAX and the GO mean X function. All right, that was a little bit of fun with geometric mean. We saw how to use GO mean X, even if and has one value. We saw how to use count rows, the min, and even a manual formula for future value of an investment. I mentioned earlier in the video about that other model I had here. If you highlight row 20 and 43, right click, down to unhide, there are the measures that I created. You can go over and look in the model and look at pivot table here. All right, that was a little bit of fun with DAX Geo Mean X and making a future value calculation. We'll see you next video.